Do you want to create a travel blog? In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed this exact travel blog from step one to step done. We're going to do it in three simple steps. We'll use SiteGround as our web host, install WordPress, and then we'll design our website. So keep watching to learn more. What's up guys, it's David from WebsiteCreatorPro.com and let's create our travel blog. So we're gonna start off by getting web hosting with SiteGround. SiteGround's the web host that I've been using for quite a few years. They're actually the web host that powers WebsiteCreatorPro.com. I love them because they're just so fast. Like my websites load so quickly, so responsive, uh, it's great. And they're also recommended by WordPress themselves, so they're just a top quality web host that you really should consider uh, getting. Now, next we're going to be using the simple theme from Themify. Don't worry, it's a free theme, but it does have a bit of a learning curve, so I'm gonna show you how to really create a nice looking website with the simple theme from Themify. Uh, lastly, make sure to check the links in the description because that's where I will be posting timestamps as well as coupon codes for SiteGround. Uh, anyways, let's jump over to my laptop and begin. Welcome to my laptop, let's begin. All right, so this is Namecheap, and Namecheap is the area, is the website that I recommend that you register your domain name with. Again, you can't own a domain name, you have to register with it. And I know in a lot of these tutorial videos on YouTube, everybody recommends getting the domain name with the web host, but they just charge more, and Namecheap is so cheap, where it's like you can get a domain name for $11 a year or something like that, whereas with like any web host, doesn't matter. SiteGround, Bluehost, HostGator, it's, it's gonna be 15, 16, $17 a year. So it's like, why pay more? Just host it, just register at Namecheap. So easy, all we have to do is go to this big search box and then, you know, and type in the domain name that we want. So I'll just come up with a domain name off the top of my head. Cold Brew Coffee Cake. All right, there's a birthday special going on. Look at that, $8 a year. Normal price is 10.98. Ooh, it's fantastic. This is why I love Namecheap because that's so cheap. Okay, so now we'll go to Add Cart, and then we can ignore all this, and we just go over here to click on View Carts, and we want to register it for two years typically because you know you want because this is an indication to Google and other search engines that your website's going to be around for a while. And so like, I think two years at a minimum is a good amount of time, you know, give your website a year as a project and see how it goes. And if you don't want to continue it, then you, know, you can come back in here and not continue. Or if it's successful, you can just come in and register for more years for whatever you want. And that's it. Just pay with PayPal or a credit card and just click confirm your order. And it's really that simple. Okay. So that's what I recommend for Namecheap to get your domain name. Next, we're gonna to want to hop over to siteground.com. Again, check the links in the description for all uh, resources mentioned, and as well as coupon codes for uh, Namecheap and SiteGround. Uh, so SiteGround, uh, this is the web host that I use, and I really like them. My websites are so fast. So what do we have to do? Again, it's so easy. We just go up here to hosting, go to web hosting, we don't need WordPress hosting. This is a managed WordPress solution. It sounds nice, but what it is, it just limits your access to your website on the back end. We like it's your website. You should have full access to it. Like, and it's not that complicated. So we'll just go with the regular old web hosting plan. And with SiteGround, you have three options here. We have startup, grow big, and go geek. Uh, and I like that they're very honest with how many monthly visitors it's suitable for. You'll see other web posts where they'll say like unlimited. Nothing's unlimited. If it's like if your website gets too big, um, you know they're gonna throttle your website or ask you to upgrade. You know, so don't don't believe any web host that says unlimited anything. So I like this because twenty five thousand monthly visitors is pretty decent traffic. That we're talking like eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand visitors a day. We're talking like fifty, sixty thousand page views. Like we're talking about a pretty decent website that's getting traffic and, and it's at the point where it can start generating some real money. And like when you get to that point where you start getting to the limits of this, it's like, well, then you're making enough money where it makes sense to upgrade. So I would definitely recommend Grow Big. And more importantly, just because with Grow Big, you can have multiple websites. Whereas with Startup, it's only one website. And I don't like that. And Grow Big also in uh, includes these premium features down here, which is uh, free site transfer, priority tech support, super cacher for great speed. And I love that super cacher because that's a built-in SiteGround plugin with that they offer that just 
cache is your plugin or cache is your website. And what that means is that your website's just gonna load faster. Like with Google and any website you own, you want it to be loading faster than three seconds. You want it to honestly load as fast as possible. You want your website to, you know, so if someone visits it and it loads up instantaneously. It's kind of like what you want. But typically they want to see, Google at least wants to see under three seconds. So, you know, that's why I like SiteGround because your website's going to be really fast with SiteGround. And to get started with them, it's super simple. You just click on get started. Now we have this one. I've registered a domain name, registered a new domain name. I already have a domain name. So if you go the name cheap route, which I strongly suggest you do, you just want to click on, I already have a domain name and why look at that, you know, almost $16 a year. What was that name cheap? $8, $8 .88. Like it's nearly half the price for the same exact thing. And it's not just SiteGround, like all web hosts do this because they have to, this is how they make money. They have to charge a little bit more because on top of, for the registration, just to, in order to make it a profitable. So that's why I recommend Namecheap, but it's totally up to you. The advantage of doing it this way, just registering a new domain with SiteGround is that everything's already set up for you and you don't have to change name servers or do anything, but we're going to do it this way. I already have a domain name and then you just want to type in your domain name that you're going to use. So we're going to be using my name, click on proceed. Just submit your account information, client information, payment information, purchase information. Uh, the one thing you want to pay attention to here is the data center. Here you can select what data center you want. So they have a few of them. They have Chicago, Amsterdam, Singapore, and London. What's the point of this? It's basically like what audience you're serving. So if your audience is primarily like UK based, you want your data center to be London. If you're primarily serving all of Europe in general, like Europe's kind of like your target audience, Amsterdam is good for you. Asia, Singapore. If you're targeting an American audience, you want Chicago. Okay, and that's it. And then you have all these buttons down here. I would like to receive emails and I confirm that I agree to the terms of service. And then you click on pay now. And that's it. That's how you get a web hosting account with SiteGround. Okay, so if you registered your domain name at Namecheap, what you need to do now is just set up the name servers. So the name servers at your domain name with Namecheap are pointed to Namecheap's servers. What you want to do is you want to point it to your server at SiteGround. It takes one minute. It's so easy. All right, so all web hosts do this. They send you a welcome email. This is the welcome email you get from SiteGround. So just check and you want to, you know, it has your login information and then it has your update your DNS settings down here. And here are our name server one and name server two. All we have to do is copy and paste that into Namecheap. So hop into your Namecheap account. Go to your domain name, click on manage. So you go to the domain, domain list, click on manage. And then you want to scroll down here to where it says name servers. You want to click this drop down, go to custom DNS, and then that's it. You take the name servers here and then you put them in here. Okay. And once you do that, up will pop a little check mark over here that you click and save. And that is it. Okay, so that's all you have to do to set the name servers for your domain name at Namecheap. And now you're ready to install WordPress. Now it's time to install WordPress on our website. Uh, this is going to take like five minutes. It's very easy to do. So we have our domain name, we have our hosting account, and we linked the two together by changing the name servers. So go ahead and log into SiteGround. And once you're in, all you want to do is go up here to my accounts, click on it. Then once you're on this page, go to cPanel, the big red button, and right here will be brought to cPanel, okay? And within cPanel, the main thing that we care about right now here is auto installer and WordPress, okay? So we wanna click on WordPress, and WordPress will take us to this page, okay? And this is the page where you install WordPress, and it's totally not complicated, okay? All we have to do is click on install now right here, and that's it. So once you click on install now, what'll pop up is this uh, section to choose uh, what domain name you want to install WordPress on. So if you, you probably only have one domain name, which will be the domain name on the account, which is right here. Uh, I would highly recommend go with HTTPS. You get a free SSL certificate with uh, SiteGround. So it makes your site secure. Google likes it. Just do it. Make it HTTPS. And that's it. So now we go down here and we have the site name, site description. We can change this later once we're in WordPress. We don't need to do it now. So it's not that important. 
And right down here, we have admin account. And your admin username is going to be something that um, you're going to be using to log into WordPress. So go ahead and make it something that you can actually remember. Don't make it something long and complicated, okay? Because uh, it's something that you're going to be using every day to log into your account. So keep it short and sweet, uh, something related to the site, perhaps. And then we have the admin password. And for the admin password, I highly recommend just using like a, a sentence or a song lyric, something that you can remember that's quite long. Those tend to be the best passwords in my opinion because they're long and you can actually remember them. And then the last is admin email. Use an email address you actually check. Don't use like this automatically as admin at this, uh, my domain name. They're like this email doesn't exist. Like this is just auto filled in. Don't use an actual email address because if you ever forget your password for your website and you request a new password via WordPress, it's going to send it to this email address and it's very easy and it works. But if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to get your uh, password. And it could happen that you forget your password because maybe you take a vacation somewhere and you're traveling, you come back after three weeks and you're like, oh, I don't remember what my password is. Uh, and then it's just going to make a big problem. So just use a real email address. And then all we do is go to the bottom here and you click on install and that's it. Okay. WordPress will be installed and it's super simple. That's it. And now to log into WordPress, you're going to have to go to WP. Okay. Admin. So you want to go to your website and you want to go to slash WP admin whenever you want to log into your website and you're going to be presented with this page. So for username or email address and password, very simple. It is the information that you put in right here, your admin username and your admin password go into each of these fields. And so input your information and then click log in and we are good to go. And we're going to begin designing our website. Welcome to WordPress. It's time to design our website. So there's a few things I like to do right when I have a fresh install of WordPress. So right now, if we just take a quick look at our website, we're using the default WordPress theme. Uh, we got to install a different theme. So first thing we need to do though, is I highly recommend you go to users and then you go to all users. And right now there's a user and that says the administrator for the website. And there's one post under the administrator. WordPress allows you to have different roles for different users. So what I mean is like, we'll go to add new. And this is what I suggest you do. I suggest you add an editor account and a new username, email, first name, just fill this out like you normally would create a different, you create a password and publish your blog post under an editor account. It just helps make your website more secure because if you're publishing under things under an administrative account, it, it's a little bit easier for people to kind of figure out like what your administrator username is. And then they can just like figure out what your password is and they have access to your site. Whereas if you're using an editor account, they don't know if it's the editor account or it's the administrator account. And like if they, okay, so maybe they could get your username for your editor account. And then if they ever got actually someone broke into your site, they're just, they're under the editor and they have no access to anything other than like blog posts and whatnot. So it's just a small thing that really, that really makes a big difference in making your website more secure. So go ahead and do that. Okay. So now with that out of the way, all right. So the next thing that we need to do is change up permalinks. So we want to go down here, go to settings and go to permalinks. Permalinks are the basic like URL structure of your site. There are two types that people recommend. The first type is post name. The second type that uh, professional SEOs recommend is that you go to custom structure and then you put in the word blog here. And then it should be the domain name slash blog slash post name. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because it helps differentiate the search engines that this is part of, this is a blog post and not just a basic page on the website. Not a big deal. Uh, I personally always go with post name, but it's totally up to you to nerd out and research that <laughs> the difference between that. But for this tutorial, we're just going to go with post name, click save changes. Okay. So now we got permalinks out of the way and now it's time to install the theme. So under themes, we go to appearance in the sidebar here. We go to themes and here are our themes. Now, normally you can add new themes up top here uh, with, with WordPress. So these are all free themes that you can instantly download and install. You can search filter by popular and the latest and you know, whatever you want. 
For this tutorial, we're using the Simple Theme by Themeify, okay? So all you'd have to do is Google Themeify Simple, okay? Themeify Simple. And it's the first result up top here, okay? And that's it. Now, it's because this is a theme shop, this is not part of the WordPress database, so you can't find it in here. This is the only way you, that you can actually get the theme. Uh, I love Themeify, I love their designs. One of my favorite shops. So then we just go to here, click download. So now they have the free version and they have the developer version, which costs money. Uh, yeah, it's if you want support, you gotta get the developer version. But you know, you can do a lot with just the free version. So go ahead and download the free theme. So now we go back here, and I've gone ahead already and download the theme. So now we just want to click on upload. We want to choose file, and we want to go to our themeify. And that's it. And now we click install now. Also, this is a zip file. Leave it as a zip file. All right. And now we want to click on activate. Okay. And we have Themeify good to go. Now, the next thing we want to do before we do anything else is we want to go back to appearance. We want to go back to themes. And now we want to delete these themes. Okay. Just again, that's just for security reasons, because if any of these has a security hole in it, people can exploit it. But if we just delete the themes and they can't be exploited, just basic security. So just click on the theme, go to the wrist red button down here and click delete. Done. 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 And okay, so now we're good to go. So now let's jump back into the Themeify settings. Okay, so Themeify, uh, let's just take a quick look at it. Yeah, see, like it's not that impressive, okay? Uh, see, like this is why you'd wanna try, this is like exactly why you'd want to have an uh, editor account because like this is my author name, do you travel for this website? Uh, but that's the administrator account name. It's like that's terrible for people already. People already have fifty percent of my account. But if this was an editor account, well, then you don't know. You don't know if it's the editor account or administrator account. That's why you want to change it. But anyways, getting off topic. This is what the theme looks like right out of the bat. It's not that impressive. It's just like you know. This is what I mean. Like you're gonna install it and you're gonna be like, I don't get it. Like how do I change that into this? I'm gonna show you how. Uh, but we have to do a couple things first. Now, what I like to do with a fresh install of WordPress is to install some essential plugins. Uh, yeah, I know it's boring, but like this is just, you have to do it. This is just hygiene as I call it. Like this is just stuff you gotta do. So let's just get it done and it'll be over quick. <laughs> so plugins. Plugins are basically little programs that add functionality to your website. And I have a core list of essential plugins that I always use. Yoast SEO, Google Analytics for WordPress by Monster Insights, WP Link Status Pro, WP Smush, Redirection, Contact Form 7. All right, let's get to it. Let's begin by installing Yoast. Just type in Yoast. Yoast is this one with 1 million plus activations. It's a plugin that helps you manage your on-page on uh, SEO for your website. It's pretty essential because it gives you a lot of flexibility and information. Okay, so now we got Yoast SEO installed. Next one I want to install is Monster Insights. Monster Insights as one word, okay? I don't know why they did this. They should have made it, broken it up so people can type because it's more natural to type in Monster Insights. You have to type it in as one thing, Monster Insights. If you don't do it correctly, what's going to happen is you're going to type in Monster Insights like this, and then this is going to pop up, and you'll be like, huh? This, I do not want to install that. You don't want that. The one you want is this, okay? And I like this little plugin because it connects with your Google Analytics and it allows you to get information about how your website is doing from within your WordPress dashboard so you don't need to uh, hop into Google Analytics all the time to check. All right, so we'll click activate. And okay, so now we got that installed, that installed. All right, so now we want uh, WP Link Status Pro. WP Link Status Pro. And it is, all right, we'll get rid of the Pro WP Link Status. There we go. WP Broken Link Status Checker. That's what the one we want. 
All right, what this does, it will check your site for 404 uh, errors. 404s mean like when you start building your pages out and you start building your blog posts and your pages and like you get to the point where you have like 20 blog posts, 30 blog posts, you know, you're gonna be start linking this stuff all the time, linking to internal pages, linking to other websites. What that does is like, you can just every like once a week, once every two weeks, just run it and it'll tell you what 404 errors you have. 404s meaning like page not found because you don't want to have page not found errors uh, within your website. So it's just a little bit, something that I like to do in terms of like, uh, you know, doing a site audit once a month or so. All right, so next we want WP Smush. All right, now we have Smush it, or sorry, Smush image comprehend, compression and optimization. Basically, this optimizes your images, makes them smaller, but still retains the quality. The point of doing this is that like, see like images like this require like more time to load. And if you can just compress them and make them fast and efficient, great. All right, skip. All right, so <laughs> it took me to a different page. All right, so now we're back on the plugins page. And now we want redirection. And it's this one right here that we want to install. What redirect re redirection does, it allows you to redirect links to different URLs. So for example, if you have a 404 page, say like you delete a page, you can send the traffic to any other page that you want, uh, that sort of thing. So if I have a page on like best travel tips, but then I can, I, you know, and I have another page on like best travel advice, but then I combine both pages into like a different page and I'll just call it like, ultimate travel guide, I can 404 redirect those two little mini pages into like the one big page. So this one big page gets all the search engine love and all the traffic that the other two little pages were getting. And then last one is contact form seven. All right, so we wanna to go to add new. Contacts, contact form seven. And it's right here, click on install, activate. We'll activate redirection. And that's it, okay? That's it, that's it for plugins that I install on a fresh install of WordPress. Now, let's start designing some aspects of the site. All right, so if we take a look at the site, uh, we have the menu bars over here, but we don't have any items in the menu. And then we have this information over here, which is the RSS and the search bar. I personally don't like having this in, this in the menu bar over here. Uh, I'd rather just get rid of it. Uh, primarily because like not many people use RSS and not many, many people use the search function here, okay? So to remove those is that you just go into Themify you go to theme settings and then you go to exclude RSS and you go to exclude search form, okay? So it's theme settings, exclude RSS, exclude search form, click save. And now if we reload the blog to take a quick look at it and it's gone. And now the next thing that we wanna do is, this is the logo and right now it's a text logo. So if we go to customize, And we go to advanced options, not basic. We wanna to go to advanced because that just gives us all the options that we want. Okay, now we wanna scroll down and we wanna to go to logo, site logo and tagline, site logo. And right here, we can choose a logo image. So you click that and now we can add an image, okay? So I already went ahead and designed a quick little logo. So the quick little lo the logo that I designed is right here, okay? And you know, it's nothing fancy. If you want a professional logo, you're gonna have to pay. Uh, I actually, I suggest Fiverr for small little logos like this for a website because they're so simple. But if you really just want a free option that, that works is you can go to Canva. And you wanna Google something called Canva logo. And then what'll pop up are all these options for you to, um, you know, create different logos. And so, you know, just pick the one that you like, pick the design that you like. And, you know, it's not that complicated. 
So the one I use is this one, Fasta. All right, I'll click on use this template. And there you go, okay? So you're not kind of free to just kind of move things around as you want. You can have different font sizes. So like I did like, uh, you know, you can put the you know, travel blog like that, or you can choose different logos. So if you want different images, you can just type in whatever image you want there. So if I want like, say I want an earth, for example, I can just type in earth. And it's like, okay, well, there we go. It's free, free. Some are free, some are paid. But for a free option, this really works well. Uh, okay, so, you know, I'll let you do that on your own time and design a logo. So just to keep things short and sweet. Now, the problem with this logo is that it's still white here. It's not a transparent logo. So what you need to do is you need to install GIMP, G-I-M-P, GIMP. Uh, it's, a free, it's a free vector graphics editor. Uh, very, very easy. So all we do is open it. We want to take this, drag and drop it into here. All right, next on this, we want to click on the magic wand. All right, and now, okay, so now we click on the magic wand and now we have the area that we want selected, edit and cut. All right, and this means it's transparent. So now we still have little areas right here that we can click on, make that transparent, that, 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 that okay edit cut okay now the whole logo is um you know transparent so then you want to go to file and you want to go to export as and you want to make sure it's a png okay so we'll export that and export All right, so now we have a transparent logo I'll just put there just to separate it. All right, so now we're all set with this. And now what I like to do is when I go to open with Office Picture Manager, you can open it with whatever program you want. All you need to do is use a program where you can edit and resize this. Uh, sorry, you want to crop it. Sorry, you want to crop it. We'll crop it down like that so it's nice. And we'll crop it like that. And that looks great. And now we'll go to edit and we'll go to resize. And we don't need a big, big logo. We can just make it something really small, like 250, 240, something like that. And there you go. That's your logo. Okay. And then to upload your logo. So we're back here. And if I want to upload a logo, all I do is click this button. And I'll save that. Open up this. And I'll go in here, which is my transparent logo that I already made. Drag and drop it in there. And we'll click on insert image. And voila, okay, there we go. We got our logo. Now, the other little thing that we need to do is we want to see this just has a blank page up here. It's like, this is where your favicon goes. See how I have this image up here, right there, right, right there. And Google has this little G, you know. Uh, that's really helpful. Like even if you do like website creative pro, like see how website creative pro has this like mark in the background here, the star, like that's what you want to do. Okay. So that's called a favicon and to make a favicon the way I did it was super simple. I just opened, went to this, I opened it up, edited picture. I went to crop and I cropped it in and then just like that. Okay. And I clicked. Okay. And there you go. That's the favicon. You know, it doesn't need to be complex, you know. And so now once you create the favicon, so we'll click publish so this saves. All right. So now we have a favicon. Where are we going to install our favicon? It's easy. We want to look for where it says favicon. So we go to general and we go to favicon and click on upload. And we want to hop into, uh, where is it? Ah, that's right. Favicon. There we go. And that's it. So now we click on save, open it up. 
we have our favicon installed and we have our uh, logo installed on the website so all right things are starting to come together okay so next up is that we want to start designing the home page with these different sections uh, we have we do that by setting one page to be the home page and then all these different other pages blog at home about contact uh, okay so let me just go to skins click on blue I just prefer blue <laughs> I think it looks nicer all right so now we have this and we need to this is a this is just a blog post okay by default WordPress will show your latest blog post unless you tell it to uh, set a home page so to set a home page well we need to create a bunch of pages first so we want to go into our pages and we want to click on add new all right so the home first page we want to add is the home page click on publish all right next we want to go to add new and we want to click a page we want to make a page and call it the blog Okay, go to add new. All right, this will be our about page. Okay, and next one, we're going to create a contact page. And we'll click publish. All right, so we got our basic pages out of the way. Let's just take a quick look at them again. We have about page, our, let's just call this about actually, not about page. Okay, so we have about, blog, contact, and home. All right, so next thing we need to do is head over to settings, head over to reading. And right now it says it's set to our latest blog posts. We wanna switch it up and make it a static home page. So now we need to set a home page. So we'll set home, the page home as the home page. And we'll set blog as the post page. And that's it. Now we'll click save changes. All right, there we go. Let's reload the page. And looking good, okay? So now we have the section here. We have the page title that says home. Uh, we have the menu bar over here. Uh, it's starting to come together a little quite nicely. Now there's a couple of different things that we need to do. So since we got rid of the RSS and all that information over here in the search function, there's our, there is something else that we could add over there. So it does, it's, it's not just this blank section over here. So we, let's go back into Themeify settings. All right, so now we can go to, we, we need to find where it says for our social links. And here we can add in our social links. So this is where you can add in all your links that for your social media profile. So, you know, we can put in twitter.com, facebook.com, and where's YouTube? Put in youtube.com. You know, this obviously it would be the URL for your specific page and click on save. Now, once you do that, you're like, okay, I put in the information. How come it's not appearing? All right, it's not appearing because there's one other little step you need to do. You need to go into widgets. All right, so widgets is social widgets up here. We need to put in the social widgets plugin from Themify. So just gotta, just gotta look for it. I'm not sure where it is, Themify. Social links right here. Let's drag that bad boy right in and let's check it out see how it looks all right so we have our social media links we have youtube facebook twitter right in the corner right there looking good uh one other little thing that i want to change is like this is kind of big don't you think it's like why is it so big like here it's nice and small and sexy and like here it's just kind of like this is a little large to change it very easy we want to click on customize Okay, so you should be under the advanced settings. Now we wanna go into our header, or sorry, we wanna go into sticky header, and we wanna go into header font, and we wanna change this to M, we wanna make this 0.7, okay? 0.7 M. M basically means like M1 would be the, the normal font size for the website. 
Um, but if you have 0.7, it'd be like 70% of the normal size of the font. That's basically all M is. Now, we just do that. There you go. That's how you change it and make it smaller. Then click on publish. And also here is where you can change the color. Ah. We'll click, we'll leave it as black. All right. And that's it. All right, so let's just take a quick look again. Now, let's go back to customize. And these link colors didn't change. Now, sometimes this theme's a little tricky, not tricky, but you know, because there's two menus, there's a sticky menu and there's a header, there's a non-sticky menu. So like when you start scrolling, the menu will follow you down. You'll see a little bit later, but let's go to main navigation, menu link. And right down here is where we, yes, there we go. All right, so we'll just make that black. All right, so I like that. And I like that highlights blue, and I like that highlights blue for the one that I'm currently active on. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Uh, again, this is your website. Feel free to play around with it. Uh, menu link hover is like where you can change the color for like, see hover over it and it's blue. If you want to change that, you just do it here menu active link is this so like you can change the color of the active menu link there uh, again it's you're free feel free to play around with it as you see fit uh, I personally just like leave it like this uh, okay so all right so for, okay so let me just change it so let's just do menu active link and I'll leave that as black all right and then we'll do link hover and we'll do a nice lime green. All right, that looks good. Uh, you know, just play around with it. It's your website, design how you wish, but that's just basically how it works. And I think I may kind of want to make that a little bit smaller. So let's just go to uh, sticky menu, sticky header, and we'll go to header fonts. And I'm going to change that to actually 0.6, just personally. Point six. All right, there we go. I like the way that looks a little bit more. All right, so now let's X out of this. All right, so now we got our social media links. Uh, we got our various pages on our website. Let's start designing the sections here. So we want to go to edit page. And we want to scroll down right down here right where it says theme, themeify custom panel. This is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work with this theme. Uh, so let's do a couple of things. We want to hide the page title. So what page title? Why do we want to hide the page title? Because the page title is home. We don't want home. We want to like, we want to write our own sentence, which is this. So, you know, we want to get rid of the page title. So we want to go to, uh, first off, I want to go to no sidebar. And I want to leave it as default or I want to go to full width, hide page title. Yes. All right. Now we go to themeify builder and we click on save. We click on update. Okay. Now everything should be gone. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Looks good. Now we want to head over to page appearance. All right, so header background, this is the header right here. Here you can choose a solid background or a transparent background, uh, up to you. Transparent means you can see through it. So as you scroll down, the, for example, uh, like that's transparent. See how it's like a little bit black, you can kind of see through it a little bit, like that's transparent. So totally up to you. If you wanna have it as a transparent background, I typically don't. I like to have a solid background cover, color for my designs. Again, it's your website. All right, so now we're in the Themeify Builder, and this is where the bulk of the magic happens. Uh, okay, so the things that you need to pay attention to are um, this green button right here. This is like your little control panel for all these little various things that we can throw in here and add as we see fit. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to add in like this text box here. Okay, like this is the thing we want to do. So how do we do that? Click on this. 
and we go to plain text or no, not plain text. We go to text, click on that and we'll just type in the name of our website. Okay. Or some sort of call to action, whatever. And I'll center it. I'll make it H1. I'll click done and I'll click save. All right. Let's see how that looks. All right, so we have travel forever right there, travel, but this one is bigger. So there's a couple of different things that we need to do. All right, so, okay, so now we wanna go to styling and we wanna go to font. And first thing we wanna do is change the font size and we wanna make it bigger. So we'll go to two and we don't want pixels, PX, no, we wanna make it 2M. Click on that, click on save. And that should make it a little bit bigger yeah there we go looks looks good okay all right and next thing that we want to do is we kind of want to add a button underneath that right so let's go to button all right so now we have different options for a button we can transparent outline again play around with it i'll just go with circle uh, button text uh click here for more or, or learn more learn more and then we we'll just keep the link. So this is useful because you, you could link this to a squeeze page to get an email opt-in form. You can link it to a course. You could link it to a long form tutorial, whatever. Uh, it's a very, very, very useful feature. Uh, okay, so now we click done. All right, so now we have the button there, but see like the button is in its own section. Easy, all you do is click and you can just move it, drag and drop it right underneath click on save and we're going to reload it and you're going to be like okay why is this off to the left over there like how do i get it in the middle like that all right easy so you want to go to styling all right so i'll click on outline instead all right so we want to go to styling we want to go to font and then you want to go to center okay and then click done Click save and we'll reload it again. All right, and the button is right there. See, like this is just what I mean. Like you gotta just play around with it to see what works. So I'll have, I'll keep it as rounded. Let's see how that works. All right, so you can't really see it, but that's how it works because we'll go into the so it's like clear white, so that's why you can't see it. But it's there, it's right there. So, and that's it. So now, okay, so now how do we add a section underneath it? It's like, how do we add like the video, see how the video's behind this? Like, how do we do that? So this is the row, this whole purple box controls the entire row. What you wanna do is you wanna go here, you wanna go to styling, you wanna go to background, and here is where you can choose whatever video or whatever you wanna add as a background. You can choose an image, you can choose a video. So if you choose an image, I highly recommend that you choose an image that's quite large. You know, you don't wanna choose a small image. You need something that's gonna be like 2000 pixels by 2000 pixels or a video. So for a video, it's quite simple. You just go to YouTube, just find any video that you like. Uh, we'll go to Aiden Robbins. That's the video I'm using. So we'll just go to Aiden Robbins, Iceland. Pause it. All right, we'll take that. All right, we'll put that in there. Done. Click on save. All right, we'll reload it. And all right, it's looking good. Okay, so now... <laughs> See, the, the text is black, so we can't see it. So we should change the text to white. And also like this needs a little bit more space. And like this is too cramped in. And to do that is easy. So let's, first off, let's fix this and make this text white. All you do is go here, go to styling, go to text, highlight it, click on this to show the full two bar, click on this and click on white. And you can't see it anymore. Well, that's fine. Click on save. All right, then we'll reload it. And okay, so now we have travel forever and we have the button there. 
Uh, a couple little things I like to add too, just to give it a little style, is we can also go to animation and we can add effect and I'll have like bounce. And I'll do the same thing with it. We'll go to styling, we'll go to animation. You can select whatever you want. There's tons of different animations, but we'll just stick with bounce. Save it. What bounce does is instead of just popping up like plain text, it actually gives it a little bit of a, some little personality. All right, so let's load it again. Ah, okay, so sometimes you have to click update. All right, let's see if that worked. Yeah, see, see how it bounced a little bit. So next, now let's give some more space to our video that's playing in the background. So this is kind of crammed in a little bit with this top and bottom. How do you do that? It's so easy. So you wanna go here to the purple, okay? So this is the row. The thing that's controlling the row is what we want you to do. And all you wanna do is go to padding. And we wanna click on this so you can adjust it all. So this is the top, bot right, bottom, left okay so just like let me ask you a question what where do you think you would put it in to make more space for this would it make sense for left and right like no this is taking up the whole side we only really want top and bottom okay so we want top how much we want maybe 15 or 10 something like that so i'll just do i'll do 15 and 10 and another critical thing make sure it's in percent okay not pixels px means pixels like pixels is like for very very detailed like movements very very small we want percentage okay m is for m is typically for fonts so m wouldn't really apply for this either so just make sure it's under percentage if you don't make it percentage you're going to get frustrating you'll be like i don't understand i'm putting 15 and 10 or 10 and 10 in like he's doing why isn't it working for me it's not working because you need to make it percentage <laughs> i know because i know when i when i've walked other people through this is the big problem that they have anyways Click on save. We'll click on update just to make sure it uh, looks good. All right, so let's reload this. And that looks fantastic, okay? It's right in the middle. We have our nice little button here that we can click on. We have the video playing in the background there. Okay, so we have our menu at the top, social media links, our menu bar, it's coming together quite nice. And by this point, you kind of should get a feel for how you can edit the site as you want. You can change colors as you want. You can change colors of this. Like, go ahead, play around with it. You know, I don't want to make this video five hours long going through minute detail, but I assume you're a smart person. You can figure it out if you want to play around with it. Uh, so anyways, yeah, it's looking good. So the next section I have underneath here is like a little welcome section totally up to you typically personally like what i like to do is i personally like for my sites especially like my niche sites i usually like to have a big header image like this maybe an email opt-in form and then boom just show blog posts and that's it and maybe just show the most popular blog posts here whatever it's up totally up to you but if you want to have like some sort of like little welcome section okay let's do that so the first thing that we need to do is i would go to fancy header or we can go divider as well. I probably, we, it's again, it's up to us, whatever we want to do. So let's look for divider. We'll just add a divider in. Divider means like this divides the sections. So we'll click on that, this divider here, and we'll leave it in its own row. Click that to save, and we'll reload it. And you can kind of tell the dividers at the bottom right there kind of like what we want just to give a little bit of space but one thing we want to do is go into styling row options and we want to make it full width just so the line instead of just doing what see how that's right there to right there we want it to go all the way across just do that by going to the purple okay purple styling and full row so we'll do that reload it again and i like that okay so next is we'll click the green button again and let's look for something that says fancy header we'll click on fancy header and you know this is a good spot to have like a little welcome message to the site that's personally what i would do uh oh sorry i forgot one other thing so it depends on how we're doing this so uh right now this is an image with um you know text next to it so let's do that so instead of okay so I don't want to confuse you we'll just do the fancy header where is that welcome to my site welcome to 
my travel blog. And then the subheader, practical, practical travel tips, tips for uh, digital nomads, <laughs> whatever. Okay, this is heading and this is a subheading. This is a good spot to add in some keyword rich uh, words that are related to travel that you wanna rank your site for, whatever. It's a good spot to throw it in here. All right, so we click done click it we'll just move it back into place where we want it all right let's load it up let's reload and see how that looks and yeah i'm liking that maybe we could do some more space right above that so again uh that's very easy to do all we do is go to padding we go to the row padding uh maybe not pixel we want a percentage and maybe we'll just leave it five percent just a little bit of space All right, okay, so there we go. So now we have a little bit of space between the sections. And welcome to my travel blog, practical travel tips for digital nomads. All right, so this section right here, I'm gonna add an image in. So we'll click on image. And here we have different sections. We have image left, image center, image to the right, whatever you wanna do. I did this one, image to the right. Um, here you wanna upload an image as appropriate. So, you know, we'll click on upload and I'll click on this picture of me out in Chiang Rai, out in some tea farm that I was visited. All right. So now we have the image title, image link. So whatever title you get. Okay. So if, say if I said, welcome, welcome, then I have image link. If I put in like google.com, it'll hyperlink this word. Okay. So you don't have to have an image link. If you don't want it, you can just have it as image title, welcome. And then image caption, uh, you know, I'm just gonna just copy this and we'll just put an image caption there. Boom, done. All right, we'll move this right there. We'll click on save and we'll reload this. And there you go, okay? So now we have the video playing, we have some space there, it comes down here. And like you could totally stylize this image. Like if you want to go into an image editor and make this like a circular image or give some sort of style to it, uh, go right ahead. Uh, one other quick little thing is like, look, see how this is broken up. If you're wondering like, wait a second, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second. Uh, you know, look, there's a space here, but there's no space there. Look, because this is a caption. So you kind of have to manually in add in a break tag. So, you know, this slash that, and then do it again, that uh, item slash, slash, I don't know what it's called, but look on your keyboard, okay? And this is called a break tag. So click on done. What a break tag is, it's just simple HTML that breaks up the uh, paragraph. And I personally like this. I mean, I like this, I like that this is wide and, you know, attention grabbing. And I like this, you scroll down, it's like this nice little um, narrowed box right in the middle. I think it looks really, really nice. And yeah, see, look at the logo. See how the logo is transparent. Um, that's what I was talking about before with page appearance, okay? So you can have a transparent background or a solid background. So like this is solid and then it's transparent. If you want it to just be transparent the whole way, you could do that right up top there. Um, again, for me personally, I like having uh, a solid background. All right, so. In a nutshell, that's that section. And now we have like an opportunity to add in like different guides and whatnot. So like, look at this. So I have this linked to a YouTube video. So, you know, I just used random images, but like, you know, say you had YouTube videos, you could add in your YouTube thumbnails right here and then people could click on it and be introduced to your YouTube channel. Space. So like, you know, this is a video of me and, do uh, and the North of Thailand. Uh, that sort of thing. So how did I do that? Super simple. Okay. So we're just going to go back, uh, to our theme builder. All right. So what do you think we need to do? Okay. I want you guys to kind of, kind of use your, use your noggin a little bit. So, you know, we definitely should have an introduction to each section. Again, that's basically how I like to design personally. Um, so we want to have another fancy header, click it. Uh, view our videos. We're on the YouTube or something like that. Whatever. We're on the 
YouTube. We're on the YouTube. All right, we don't need a subheading for that. All right, so we'll drag that up there. Click on save. And we'll reload this bad boy. And okay, so like we're on the YouTube. All right, that looks good. If you want, again, give it space if you want. I think it looks all right the way it is. I don't really think it needs that much padding. Uh, maybe a little bit, maybe we'll just go in padding. Uh, we'll go into not pixel percent. <laughs> Sorry for hammering that point, but it's like when I've worked with people with this, people get so frustrated because they're like, I don't understand. I'm following you, but it's not making the change that you're, I'm seeing you do. All right, so that looks good. All right, so now we have this row and what we wanna do is we wanna add in three boxes and that's so easy. You just go right here, scroll up there and now here you go. Like you have one solid box, two boxes, three, four, six, a hundred. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding, not a hundred, but uh, we click on three and then one, two, three. Done, how easy was that? All right, so now what do we need to do? We need to add an image. That's it, that's all we need to do. So you go back to the green arrow and then find where it says image. Click on image. And then, all right, so we wanna upload an image and I'm gonna upload this YouTube video or this image of a laptop that I have. Uh, okay, and uh, travel video, travel video. Okay, we'll just call it image title image link so now we can just go grab a YouTube video all right so now we want to go to any travel video you want so I'll just use my personal blog channel just <laughs> it's just my place where I post random videos uh, for travel all right so we'll go with this one all right so we just copy the URL and play that and go to image link click on that all right click away now you have options to have it same window white box new tab all right if you ever have a link that goes off your website it should always open a new tab so if you want to either so your options with the youtube video are either to have it open in a new tab or have it open in a light box i'm just going to go with a light box we'll click done and we'll click it and we'll put it in its little place. Okay, and that's all we need to do. We just need to do that again uh, two more times. So we'll do that. Upload, and we'll upload this one instead. All right, and video title, whatever. The link, put it in there. Lightbox, yeah, it's the same video, but this is just for demonstration purposes. All right, put it in there. And one more time, image, upload, and uh, just whatever image you want. Okay, so we'll do that one, whatever. All right, image title, yet yeah, another video, uh, image link, Again, paste your YouTube channel in it, YouTube URL link in it, click away, click on Lightbox, click on done, and drag it into spot. All right, so now we wanna click save, and we wanna click on update, and we wanna reload the page. And there we go. Okay, so now we have run to YouTube, and we have links to our videos if we want. Again, if it's totally up to you if you want links to the videos or not. So if you want to get rid of that, you could just get rid of the image title and you just have image link. You don't need a title. I mean, it's helpful. You know, it gives context to the video and people can also click on it. And because you set the video as a light box, so like when someone clicks on it, the video will pop up in a screen like this. Uh, personally, I don't find that too helpful, but like, hey, if you wanna create an introduction to your YouTube channel, that's fine. Um, another quick little thing that you could do is to go here and go to buttons. Uh, where is it? Button, you know, and again, you can go through the whole process of adding a button and then you can have button text, visit our YouTube channel, whatever okay i'm not going to do that because i don't 
you know, not that important to me personally, but if you wanted it, and then you'd have the button that says like visit our YouTube channel there. So that's it for that. Um, now underneath that, okay, so next we have blog posts. And again, let's just do the same thing. So we wanna go here and we wanna to go to fancy header and uh, the latest, the blog, the latest posts, something like that. Just something that's clear and specific. Don't get like cute and clever, okay? Just call it blog, the blog post, recently published, something like that. All right, so we have that. And let's just check to see how it looks. All right, the blog. All right, so maybe I wanna move that down right here. And instead, let's add in a divider because I think that would look a lot nicer. So we'll go, where is my divider? I can't see. All right, so <clears throat> there's our divider. And divider width, fold width, sure. All right, so here's our divider. We'll move it up right there. We want the divider to stretch the whole of the page. So even though the divider itself is set to full width, doesn't matter because it's in a row that is not set to full width. So we have to do that, okay? Set that to full width and we click save and we'll reload the page and there we go. Okay, so now we have different little sections. Welcome to my travel blog. We have videos to our YouTube channel and the blog and the latest posts. And the last thing that we need to do is we just need to add in our blog posts. So let's look for something that says posts or something like that. Uh, where is it? Post image. Ah, there we go. Post. All right. So here we have different options to show various posts. You can, I personally like to show either this one that shows three or this one that shows four. Um, you know, we'll just do this one that shows four. Uh, so things that I would like to do personally is I would like to hide post title or sorry, hide post date. Yes. Hide post meta description. Yes. Um, okay. So we'll click on done and move it up there. Click on save, click on update. All right. Let's reload this. All right. So now we have. The only, we only have one blog post published, so it's showing right there. All right, so now we need to jump back into it. So we wanna go here, we're gonna go to styling, we to go to post. All right, so display excerpt. I typically don't like to display excerpts. Excerpts is this stuff, like this is, we don't need this. Like it doesn't help people click on it. Doesn't make it more compelling. Like just, you have to have good content, good titles. And there we go. All right. So now let's just go over and play with the blog a little bit. Um, we'll go back into a different tab. We'll go into posts and we'll delete this WordPress by SiteGround. We'll go to add new. And I just have, where's my fake text? Yeah, here's my fake text. <laughs> Just fake text I'm gonna use. All right, so then we have fake text. We'll use the fake text and travel blog post. Travel to Thailand, whatever, travel to Thailand. All right, and then here for the blog post, um, okay, so this is why we installed Yoast SEO. If you scroll to the bottom there, you can change the appearance of what the paid, the post will look like in a search engine. Typically you want to go something that is, um, keyword rich that's related to the blog post. So like I have traveled to Thailand, uh, the stunning, and then you just need to pay attention, travel to Thailand dash, like five things to that five things to see and do and then like hashtag or not hashtag <laughs> but like star or like a separator of some sort like we could do this separate separator dave or david yuki.com something like that and see how this line is green the url is simple 
All right, so that's kind of like what you want to do. And this is how it's going to appear in the search engine. So you want your keywords heavy at the beginning. And then the, uh, the meta description is the detailed descriptions of the blog post. This is also where you should put in like relevant related keywords and phrases. All right, so next we want to set a feature image. And to set a feature, feature image, we just click on that and uh, we can just drag and drop something in that we want. We'll just drag that one in. Okay, and then we'll set this as the featured image. Uh, add new category. Keep your category short and sweet. I wouldn't add too many categories, maybe two or three categories for your entire website. Really, you don't need eight or nine categories. Pick like business, work, just whatever like the main topics are of the website. All right, click publish. All right, so now let's just take a quick look at to see how our website is looking. All right, so we got the video, we got the welcome message, we got the button, we got this little section, we got this. All right, and so now there you go. Now you have your blog post. And now as, as you continually publish more blog posts, one, two, three, four, uh, they'll just automatically show up. And so your latest blog post will always show up. And that's basically it for how you design the homepage. All right, so now it's time to tidy up some loose ends. Let's jump into it and begin. We're gonna start with this menu section at the top and we're gonna start with this menu section at the bottom. So I went ahead and did a couple things uh, just to speed up, you know, just speed up the tutorial. So we wanna go into themes and we wanna go into menus, okay? And you can create a menu by clicking on this, create a new menu, and then you can give the menu a name like, uh, what I did was the menu or sorry, menu or top bar or navigation, whatever. Okay. And then like, say if I was just to create a call this top bar, I'll create the menu and okay. So this is the menu and I can choose on like where the menu goes. So is it the main navigation or is it the footer navigation? Okay. And right. <clears throat> so for example, uh, we'll go to main menu. This is the main menu and it's called the main menu. It's set to affect the main navigation. So the main navigation is the top menu at the top here, okay? This is the main navigation. Now I can move these around as I see fit. So like right now I have home. If I wanted to move home, I could just click it, change it like that and watch. Now we move, just moved home over, okay? So that's what I did. So, you know, that's how you move things around in the menu bar. And if you wanna change the footer, because this theme is great, it actually comes with a nice little footer menu as well. You go there, you click this, and you go to footer navigation, click select. And here we go. We have only about in contact in our footer. Uh, this is a great spot to add like various pages, like tutorial pages or just product pages or, you know, just, you know, miscellaneous things that you also want to add, but maybe they don't fit into the menu bar. Uh, another thing, keep your menu short and sweet. Like even though this only allows menus on this side, keep it short, like four items max. I mean, if you look at other websites, they always have like four, four, maybe five items max. Like keep it as short as sweet. So like I would always, for like a website, like a travel blog, it'd be like uh, about blog, home, even contact. Like I would probably like remove contact and I would probably just leave contact at the footer here. And then instead of that, I would have like, like courses, guides, books, travel guides, uh, resource page, things like that. If I was to start a travel blog and that's it, that's all I would have in the menu bar at the top. I'd keep it as, as minimalistic as possible. And okay. So that's it for the menu bar. That's how you change the menu. Uh, you go here, you can select which menu you want to adjust. Okay. Now let's take a quick look at this section right there. How did I change that? Uh, because before that was like powered by WordPress and using simple theme and we don't want that, you know, we want our own thing. So let's go to footer text and here you go. So footer text two affects this section down here. This is a great little spot to say like, thank you for visiting subscribe or, uh, you know, don't st don't copy your blog. I don't know, whatever. Like you can add any sentence you want in there. And then I have this as the copyright. So what I did personally is all I did was, uh, I'll just cut this out for a second. All I did was like copy and paste the C. So it's copyright. And then I just wrote the domain name 2018. And then we have like a divider and then we'll put in some HTML. 
that hyperlinks to a privacy page, a terms of use page and disclosure page. And that's all I did. So I'm going to show you quickly how I made that this HTML. I didn't handwrite it by myself. Okay. Uh, that <laughs> I could, but why that, that's going to take so long. All you have to do is go to pages and go to add new and just go about creating new pages. Okay. Create your privacy page, create a policy page and create a terms of use page. Okay. And then once you have all those pages together, what you can do is very simple is that you just type in the words privacy terms disclosures and then you highlight the t highlight the paper or the word click the add a hyperlink and add the hyperlink and that's it and then when you're ready to copy and paste this you just click on text and here is the html good to go nice and easy and all you have to do is just go back to the themify simple settings and just throw it in the footer okay so let's go to the theme settings footer text and that's it. Just copy and paste it in and you're good to go. It's that simple. All right. So next, so that's the menu and that's the footer. Let's just quickly talk about the blog. You can change the blog around as you see fit. Just go to themeify settings again, and we go to default layout. Now posts come in two uh, layouts. There's single post and then there's archive. So your blog post is actually an archive and we're going to go to archive layout. Here, it's like I can have no sidebar or I can add a sidebar if I want. Personally, I wouldn't add a sidebar to the blog post. I would just like one, two, three, four, five, six, just this page showing off all my blog posts is what I would prefer. I have the layout set to a grid of three by three and I have it set to display no content. For example, if I had it as excerpt, it would look like this. And like, you know, I, I personally don't like that. This is just ugly and, and it doesn't really affect people's ability to click. Like people are going to click on based on your titles. So I personally would just have none and I would hide all the metadata. Metadata is like the author, the category, comments, tags, etc. Like that's irrelevant information. You know, you, the goal with the blog section, this little page right here is to get people to click. So you don't want to give them too much information. Just have them read the title and you know, that's it. That's all you have to do. And so just play around with this and see what you like. Now we click on this and this is a blog post page. So that's the archive post layout. Let's go to single post. And right now I have it set to hide feature image, but if I had this as no, the way the page would look is it would show off this gorgeous image. Uh, I'm personally not a big fan of this design because like I don't want to push my content all the way down but it depends on you, the way you want to design your site looks great, but I prefer to get rid of the feature image. I like having a feature image as like a related post, but as this big image right here, eh. all right. And that is it. And then you can change the sidebar there, left sidebar, no sidebar. You will change it to a left-hand sidebar, for example. Okay. So there we go up to you, how you want to play around with that. Um, to change this stuff is very simple. You go into appearance and widgets and here is like the sidebar is where you can add whatever you want and you can easily delete things like that, you know, and that's it. That's how you just play around with the sidebar and what should go in the sidebar. You should put in either display advertisements, a welcome message, an email opt-in form, um, categories, bet your top posts, just, you know, minimalistic information. Don't overdo it. Okay. Uh, primarily because like, uh, you know, if as this page is like, so for example, if we were to like pretend that like we're on a phone, like this is what it's going to look like if someone's on their phone and it looks great, but then the, the sidebar is pushed underneath everything. Okay. So just be wary of that. So you, that's why you don't want to overdo it with the sidebar. Just keep it simple. Uh, or otherwise you're going to create this like really long page. If someone's viewing your website on their phone or just get rid of it altogether. Okay. And now for the entire tutorial, we've been seeing this <laughs> configure your Google analytics settings. Uh, that is because we installed, uh, you know, monster insights, which I highly recommend. So Google analytics is basically, uh, a site where, you know, is where you just get your analytics so you can see your data about how your website's performing. And all we can do is just click on this button, basically sign up with Google, log in, create a Google analytics account. Uh, if you need help, maybe there's an, find another tutorial about how to like set up Google analytics. And then all you do is like log into Google, Google analytics and you click this button right here and it authenticates your account with Google and you get all that good, 
um, display data uh, right here. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I just went ahead and that's it. And so we have reports and we can just view our information. So this is a brand new website with no data, no nothing, but you know, there we go. We can check our visitors per, uh, per day, whatever, average visits, page views, bounce rate, all that good stuff. And one other little thing that I personally like to do with my websites, websites is to add social media links. Uh, my favorite one is a tool called add this a D D T H I S basically just log in, create an account. Uh, and then you're able to create social media share buttons. You got to play around with it. I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to assume that you need, I, you know, you need too much help. It's not that complicated. Just log in and go about creating your social media buttons. And you get to this point where you get code and all you do is right click, copy the code from add this. And once you have that code, you want to go back to themify simple. And we want to go to themify settings, I believe. No default layouts. No general. <laughs> All right. Header code. There we go. Header code. Copy and paste that in. Click on save this. And what that does is it adds social media links off to the left that make people want to share content. And I personally like add this a lot because that's fairly effective how this follows me as I scroll up and down. Uh, I also like it just because, um, you know, it'll come in from the bottom and take over the bottom when someone's on their phone and it's just, you know, just really helpful plugin and, if, and you need a social media plugin as well. So, you know, the best one is social media warfare. That absolutely is the best plugin. So I'll just type in social media, social media warfare. Let's just take it out. But this is not free. Okay. That's the only downside. This plugin's not free. So if you want a free alternative to this, check out uh, add this. It's the one that I use a lot that I like. I think it's very effective and I like it because they email you once a week about like how many shows, social shares you got and overall analytics and views to your site. And yeah, that's it. So that is it for this tutorial. Oh, hold on a second. I almost forgot. We are not done yet. We have to add a contact page. So now that we have our contact page, okay, this is one of the first pages we created. And so this is what the contact page looks like. Uh, okay. so. What we want to do is we want to go to contact off in the left right here. And okay. So we have a contact form. We can click edit and we have your name, your email, subject, your message. And I like that. And we could just, that's, that's fine. That works. And we can just take that right click, copy, click paste or sorry. We don't want, we want to click paste into the visual because this is a short code. This is not HTML. So we don't want text. We want visual. All right. So now we've copy and pasted the form in and we should have a nice stylish form on our page. Uh, I would highly recommend, uh, give, give some context to this, you know, give some context like, Hey, thanks for visiting. If you want to contact me, do so via Facebook or Twitter or use the form below whatever guys just come up with something you know and that is it and another thing i like about this theme too is like specifically with pages like we can also customize um the various like header sections of the page so i can't do this with blog posts but you can do this with pages and all you have to do is again go to page options page appearance and page title background and then we could just set a background image as we want. So I'll just check, select this one just for the heck of it. And we'll click update. And see, it takes the background image and it looks really cool. So 
Anyways, you know, and to change this again up top here, this like say if you don't want it to be white, you want it to be black or a different color. Uh, again, that's all done with this customized section there. Um, same if you want to change the color of the social media links or the body or the text or any other element. If like you want to change the colors of something, you have to come back into here. Don't forget. And then just select any one of these to play around with different colors as you see fit. I mean, I'm not going to play around the colors because I like the way it looks. But if you're just wondering like, hey, how do I adjust things like that? That's basically it. So that's basically it for this tutorial. Those are all the loose ends that I would tidy up. And I really, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, that's how you create a really nice, you know, lovely travel blog with the simple theme from Themify. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. Uh, if you liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel leave a like and share the video with whoever you think it could help. So I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.